Hey, what's going on guys? It's Quality, and this is going to be the start of my new series, uh, Smite How-Tos. And the first how-to is going to be on Al Kuang, the Dragon King of the Eastern Seas. He's a Chinese god. <clears throat> what makes him really unique is he's one of only two melee magical gods in the entire game. And I think you guys are really going to like him. He's my favorite character in the game, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to use him. So let's jump right into it. Alright guys, so I'm going to go over all of Alquang's abilities in jungle practice and show you what they do and how to use them. And I'm also going to show you the items that I use that I personally found over like several hours of practicing in jungle practice. What I found worked the best for Alquang. So if you guys want to go into jungle practice, um, just press the up arrow key and it'll pop up all of your abilities and how to use them and it'll tell you what they do. Um, Alright, so Al Kuang's passive ability <clears throat> is called King's Sword. Uh, a passive ability is on every single character in the game. They're all different. And it's not an ability that you actually get to use. It's just an ability that the character has that uh, benefits them in some way. So King's Sword. Al Kuang's sword can hold up to three energy charges and regenerates charges while his sword is sheathed. Each time Al Kuang casts an ability, an energy charge will be consumed if available, increasing the damage of the ability. If Al Kuang is out of mana, he will use energy charges to cast abilities instead. So to sum that up for you guys, um, if you look to the bottom left of the screen, you can see the sword has three different sections on it. Um, every time you use an ability, you see you lose a section of the sword. So if you're out of mana, your mana bar is the blue bar down in the middle. Um, if you're out completely out of mana, you have zero mana. If this charge, or uh, if the sword has any charges in it, <clears throat> you can use that instead of mana. So it's basically allowing you to use a couple extra abilities if you're out of mana, which is really nice. You can see how I'm swinging the sword around. Um, when you put the sword back in its sheath, that's when the charges start regenerating. And they regenerate, you get a new section of the sword every 5 seconds. So it works really nice. Um, it really comes in handy sometimes when you're out of mana and you're in a tight battle. You can pop one of your moves and you can get out of the way. And it also deals additional damage. So when you have a full charge sword with all three sections filled up, you can use your ability and it adds a 5% damage buff. His first move is called Water Illusion. It's a teleport ability and it's also an invis ability. And invisibility is where you go invisible. Um, Al Kuang teleports forward into stealth, leaving behind a watery form of himself. He remains in stealth for 5 seconds or until he attacks or takes damage. Al Kuang may activate this ability again to detonate the watery form, dealing damage to nearby enemies. This move for Al Kuang is arguably the most important move. In order to know how to use Al Kuang, you have to be good with using this ability. When you press the ability for the first time and you don't activate it yet, you'll see you have like a big circle around you and there's a smaller circle out in front that's where you're gonna dash to it's more it's technically a teleport but it's almost it's almost like a dash so when you activate the ability you're gonna go to that circle in front and you're gonna have like a watery form of yourself when you turn around there's gonna be that decoy and you can press X again or whatever your button is to activate that ability again and it will detonate the uh, the decoy and it does do a good amount of damage late game and it's also good to lure people in so for example if there's an enemy in front of me right here I could pop my water illusion and dash behind him and then he would try to attack and as I'm teleporting away with the water illusion he would attack the decoy for a second you can turn around and detonate that and pop your other abilities and hit him with those. Al Kuang's second ability is called Dragon Call it's a stim slash line ability. This is a very unique ability because it can be used in two ways. Um, Al Kuang summons six dragons to his side. <clears throat> For su every successful basic attack Al Kuang makes, a dragon will dive to the target dealing ad additional damage. This ability ends after all dragons are used or after 10 seconds. Al Kuang may activate this ability again to send forward any remaining dragons in a ranged attack. The dragons damage and slow the first enemy they hit. So... When you press the button you're activating your dragon call with, for Xbox it's A, so I'm just going to refer to it as your X, A, B, and Y. So when you activate your A, 
you're going to see these dragons are going to pop around you. You can melee, and every time that you melee, which is your RT or your basic attack button, every time that you hit an enemy with it, one of those dragons is going to fly off, and it's also going to hit along with your basic attack. So, for example, if I go over to this Odin, and I swing once, one dragon goes down with it. And I swing another one, and another dragon goes down with it. Another way you can use this ability is after you pop the dragons around you, you press A again and you'll have this line and you can press A and you can fire the dragons and that is a magical attack. The dragons, every time they hit, they are counted as a magical attack. While your sword hits, it's counted as a basic attack. Alquang's third ability is called Wild Storm. This is most likely, I would consider this Alquang's most unique ability. Alquang unleashes a, so a storm of lightning from his sword, damaging all enemies in front of him. This hit is considered a basic attack and will activate item effects. This ability is key to doing massive amounts of damage with Alquang. Why? Because it counts as a basic attack. It does use mana as an ability, but any items that you put on that buffs damage for basic attacks it does count towards the wild storm so when you press B you're gonna have this triangular shape in front of you and you press B again and it shoots out the lightning like so you do get this ability back very fast um he gets this ability back the fastest out of all of his abilities when you hit any sort of damage with it it does count as basic attack damage and I'm gonna explain to you why that's really good in a little bit so you can see it does do good damage and when you use the items that I'm going to show you what to use later, it's going to use max potential on all of Alquang's damage. Alquang's fourth and final ability, otherwise known as his ultimate ability, is King of the Eastern Seas. Alquang grabs a single target, damaging and knocking them into the air. If the target is below a health threshold, Alquang will also reveal his true form, becoming an airborne dragon and executing them, restoring health. After transforming, Alquang then picks a new location to land, dealing damage to enemies within range of 20 and fully recharging his sword. I'm going to teach you guys a secret to using this ultimate ability, and I promise you, once you get good with Alquang, you will learn how to use this ultimate ability very well, and it's going to get you out of tricky situations, and it's also going to most likely guarantee you a double kill most of the time if you know what you're doing. Okay, so I'm going to go show you the right way to use Alquang's ultimate ability and the wrong way to use Alquang's ultimate ability. The wrong way to use Alquang's ultimate ability is leading into a fight with it. So I'm going to show you what that looks like here. If you hit just a slight amount of damage and you use Alquang's Y ability, it just pops them up in the air and it does do a little bit of damage, but it does not do a good amount of damage. So that's the wrong way to do it. The right way to use Alquang's ability is to use your other abilities first, do the damage, and you're going to get their health down below a certain health threshold, and I'm going to show you what it looks like when you get their health down low enough. As you can tell, Raw has this X that pops above him, and this is when you want to use Alquang's ultimate ability. So you use it on him, and you can see he turns into a dragon and he floats in the air. And then he has a circle with a timer on it that you can also land on people dealing additional damage and you can also use it to get out of the battle. Now that I've covered the basics on all of Alquang's abilities, I'm going to show you the items that put his abilities at max potential. Okay, so this is my custom build for Alquang. Um, what I run is I'll go over just all the names of them so you guys can look at them and I'm going to explain to you why I run these. Shoes of the Magi, Kronos Pendant, Rod of Tahuti, Polynomicon, Soul Reaver, and Spear of Desolation. The reason I run all of these abilities is because, for one, I'm going to go a little more into detail about Polynomicon and Soul Reaver because these two abilities are key for Alquang for him to do massive amounts of damage. And two, I like to get just a slight bit of penetration because trust me, it helps. Um, if you add that slight bit of penetration with Sphere of Desolation, it also adds a lot of magical power, and it really helps end game when people think they can just put on one thing of armor and that penetration kind of counteracts it. Okay, so the reason I use Shoes of Magi is because it gives me a slight magical power advantage over the Shoes of Focus. The Shoes of Focus would be the ideal 
boots for you to start with for your fight your first item if you're starting out with Al Kwong. I use Shoes of Magi because I'm a little more experienced with him and I know what I'm doing going into a fight. So I like to use that extra five uh, magical power buff. buff. Um, Shoes of Focus is good for beginners because it gives 10% cooldown reduction, 18% movement speed, 250 mana, and 40, 40 magical power. Um, the Shoes of Magi give an extra 5 power, and they give 10 magical penetration. That's also another reason I use them. And, of course, they give 18% movement speed like the rest of the boots. The next item is called Kronos Pendant. This is definitely the second item right after the boots that you want to put on. You definitely want to use this because it gives 20% cooldown reduction, and it adds a good amount of magical power. Cooldown reduction is key especially for Al Kwong's third ability, Wild Storm, because once you put the Kronos Pendant on and you get it maxed out, you get the ability back in 5 seconds, which is almost nothing. The third ability I use is Rod of Tahuti, and I use it because it gives massive amounts of magical power. Its passive ability also increases magical power by 25%. So you're getting 125 magical power on top of your max potential, Magical power gets increased by 25%, which is really nice for all of Al Kwong's abilities to do a lot more damage. The fourth ability that I use is Polynomicon. This personally is my favorite ability that I use on Al Kwong, and I'm going to explain to you why. It adds 75 magical power, 300 mana, and 10 magical lifesteal. Its passive ability, using an ability, gives your next basic attack within the next 8 seconds 75% of your magical power as additional magical damage. The effect can only apply once every 3 seconds. It adds 75% of your magical power as additional magical damage. The good part about Polynomicon is that it does it to your next basic attack. Your B, as you remember from earlier in the video, my your Wild Storm ability counts as a basic attack. So you can use your A and your B at the same time and when you hit them with it it's gonna activate on the bottom left you can see it activated Polynomicon when you hit with your B it's gonna do magical damage and basic attack damage and it adds 75% of your total magical power damage on top of your basic attack damage it stacks damage and it does a lot of damage especially in the late game the next ability is Soul Reaver that I use and this is also another key ability that you have to use with Al Kwong. I cannot stress this enough about using Polynomicon and Soul Reaver. Because every time I see somebody using Al Kwong and they don't have these abilities on, I want to message them and call them an idiot. Because these are the two number one abilities that you have to have on Al Kwong. Soul Reaver adds a lot of magical power and mana. And its passive ability is when a god takes damage from your abilities, they take 10% of their maximum health in additional damage. If multiple gods are hit, damage is applied to the one with the greatest maximum health. This can only occur once every 40 seconds. The last two sentences for Soul Reaver uh, on its passive ability isn't really important. The most important part is when a god takes damage from your abilities, they take 10% of their maximum health in additional damage. When you hit somebody with a magical attack, it takes 10% of their maximum health and it adds it on to additional damage along with your ability. So when you activate an ability, it's also going to activate Polynomicon, and you can use your B, because it counts as a basic attack, to get the Polynomicon effect along with the Soul Reaver effect of damage at the same exact time. And that's why it, those two abilities are key to have right next to each other when you use Al Kwong, because you stack additional damage on top of your abilities. The last ability or item I use is Spear of Desolation. It adds a lot of uh, magical power and magical penetration, and its passive ability is if you kill an enemy god, all of your cooldowns are reduced by 8 seconds. This cannot activate more than once every 30 seconds. Spear of Desolation's passive is great for going into battles late game because it gives you the penetration and power you need to go over the edge against people that are running armor against you, and when you kill them, all of your abilities cooldowns are reduced 
so you can get your ultimate back faster and you can go kill more enemy gods. So that wraps it up for the items and abilities of Al Kwong. Now I'm going to go into why you should be using him stealthily and not going straight into a battle with him. And I'm going to explain to you how to do that. Going into battles beginning game with Al Kwong, you especially want to maximize your ability on the water illusion. You want to use it to go into battles most of the time in the beginning game because if you go into a battle without using a beginning game, you're most likely not going to do enough damage because you're going to have to go out of the way and you're going to have to run away. So you want to sneak up on people by using this invisibility to get the first hit on them and get the extra advantage in the beginning game so you can get the kill without dying. Because Al Kwong is a squishy character and he does not do enough damage to really one or two maybe even three hit people with his abilities until late game so you want to make sure that you're leading in with your invis move so you can get the first two three hits on your enemy and if you don't kill them that's fine because most of the time they're gonna back up if you don't kill them and you won the battle for your team so I'm gonna show you an example of that right here you don't want to let your enemies see you you want to sneak up from behind them Use your water illusion and jump into a battle and they don't even know you're there. As you can tell, I hurt him a lot, just like I said, and he is gonna back up if you lose the bat if he loses the battle, or you can get the kill. The bad part about Al Kwong is his mana usage is not very good beginning game. Uh, that's why I said for beginners to use shoes of focus because they add additional mana. And unless you're advanced with Al Kwong and you know what you're doing, you really want to have that extra mana. As you can tell, when I'm about to go into this fight, watch what I do on this Hades. He's the, the legendary skin with the gold on him over there. I'm going to show you the right way to use his abilities to attack people. So when you go into a fight, you want to pick a target beginning game with not full health because that just gives you that extra advantage and it ups your probability to get the kill when you go into a fight you don't want them to see you like I said earlier and when you get up close to them you want to pressure A and your B at the same time so you're using both of the abilities at once and then you can use your Y and you can execute them as you can tell he dashed away so I didn't get to use my ultimate ability on him but as soon as you see that X pop up you want to start spamming your ultimate ability because it's a guaranteed kill once the X is on them. <clears throat> now there are downsides to it as if if they pop like a relic like sanctuary or something you are just gonna throw them up in the air without doing any damage to them but that's fine because by the time they're in the air and come back down your water illusion ability will be back and you can use that to get out of the fight and or turn around and go back in for another try at the kill. Another way to approach a fight I don't recommend doing this at the beginning of the game because too many characters <clears throat> are tankier than Al Kwong in the beginning game. I mean, he's a very squishy character as it is, but it's hard to kill tanky characters in the beginning of the game until you get enough damage. Okay, so another way you want to go into a fight with Al Kwong, this is more of the late game approach. Um. Most of the time, I still use the beginning game approach anyway on all enemies because you want to be invisible so you get that first couple hits on them because trust me, in the late game when you have most of your items, you're going to do so much damage that they're not even going to be able to hit you. They're not like you're going to be able to hit you back. So then uh, the other way to go in and do a fight is to not use your water illusion ability and then if they're doing amounts of damage to you, you can either A, use it to go at them like I just did and execute them with your ultimate ability and then you can get out of the fight, or B, you can go into the fight without using your water illusion, pop your A and B at the same time and get ready to use them on your enemy, and then let's say you're losing the battle, you can use your water illusion to actually dash and go invisible and get away from the fight. And you can go back to your fountain and you can get your health back. The only downside to using Water Illusion is it does leave a slight <clears throat> um, trail behind you. So you're going to have to not go straight out of your Water Illusion. Like if you pop it, 
don't go completely straight because it does leave a slight trail behind you right when you use it as to where you're do where you're going so the enemies can actually predict where you're going so you want to make sure that you zigzag just a slight bit when you use it so they don't know where you're at so that's the basic how to on how to use Alquang like I said I would start off with the shoes of focus until you get used to using them and then you can use the shoes of Magi for that extra penetration and power buff if you're gonna use the shoes of Magi you want to be utilizing the mana camp as much as possible because it really helps you regen regen mana fast and you don't have to use your uh, charges on your sword which is his passive ability but yeah let me know what you guys think of this how to comment if I missed anything and let me know what character you want me to do next because I'm really gonna enjoy doing a bunch of characters for you guys and I figured why not start it out with my favorite character Al Kuang but yeah um, this is the how-to on the Dragon King of the Eastern Seas, Al Kuang, and I'll talk to you guys later.